So Matt, so many times we're in the Agents tab and we glaze right over the Media Agent. What is it and what can we do with it? Yeah, the Media Agent has been around for a very long time. It's probably one of the first features of Composer with some of the earliest editions. It's not gotten a lot of love lately and has kind of fallen uh, to the side, but it still does have some key features that we want to take a look at. So let's jump into Composer and see what we can do with it. As usual, we're going to jump over to our properties and go to our agents. I'm sorry, we're not going to go to our agents. We're going to go to media. So the media tab has its own dedicated tab. And there actually used to be a media software tool that would you would use for Composer as well. So you could actually use Composer Media Edition without having to buy any license and then you can go and manage your media. Here we can see some of our um, options. The first one being media scanning options. So here we can see the media space being used for graphics, which would be like album art or screensavers and uh, etc and then we have our total use so this will let us know that if we're we're exceeding that then we might have some issues and then we have our scanning option so the, here we can see that this is scanning every day and then we can choose which devices to scan i don't have this network file storage anymore so i can remove that and then we can apply these settings and now it's going to check that usb drive for any new media that gets added to it the nice thing about um the USB drive being plugged into the controller is I can access that through the network. So I don't actually have to take that drive out and plug it back into another computer. I can just download directly onto it through a network drive. Then we can use some of these other options. We can do an online media lookup. We can replace saved images with the lookup image. So maybe you have your own custom album art for your music or your collection. So you can just tell it don't don't replace it. And then we have um, media database if the file tags have changed. So if the, some kind of information about the album changed or, or movie title changed, whatever, then we can update it here. Then we have our individual devices. So network file storage um, is something you can use with a device that supports SMB file storage. It's an old feature of Windows network file storage and it's not really being used and it's not really supported in newer versions of Windows. So it is a little bit of a bear to set up, but you might have some devices that support it right out of the uh, box, like regular network attached storage NASs. Those, those might support that. So you can set up the Control 4 system to scan that network attached storage. However, DLNA is a thing and it's a much more modern version of this where it can scan and update metadata um, actively and on the fly so you don't have to be scanning information all the time from the storage. So I would recommend using the DLNA music servers and services if you're going to do it for music. However, if you've got an older setup, this is where you'd want to change those things. And then here we can see our USB drive, which apparently is not getting anything. So we can press the scan button to manually scan it. We'll see if this will scan fast enough and we'll come back to it. Uh, we can also add media here as well. So if we're gonna add a folder on the, on the drive that we wanted to scan, we would do that, but we wouldn't add a folder from our computer. So don't get confused here. Uh, it's just specifically to that USB drive. Here we can see we have a Sony 4K Blu-ray player with a whole whopping list of one disc. So we'll probably not use this here, but if you have some older Sony carousels that had like 300 DVDs in them and, and they automatically scanned into Control 4 through the serial connection, you would find that catalog here so that you can make sure that the information is being corrected. Or if you put in new disk, you could tell it to um, scan again. Or if you wanted to edit any of the information, because let's say you had some really obscure video in there and it wasn't quite sure and it grabbed some weird art or weird title, then you can update it in this, this section as well. And then we have our screensavers. Um, most of all my screensavers came from the USB drive which it is currently scanning, so it's now broken everything. There we go, it loaded up. Here we can see all the photos that I have that I can use for screensavers on my OSDs, touchscreens, um, and you could use them as backdrops in the mobile app as well if you wanted to. Now we're finally getting to the one like more relevant, useful tool of the media agent, and that is broadcast television. So if we go down to the Dish Network, we can see I've got all of our different channels here and art and everything else that we want for it. So um, this will allow us to have favorite channels in the remote interface, the app interface that we can quickly shortcut to a specific channel, 
or if you've got friends or family coming over or family members that are just not familiar with the channel numbers, then they can go into the remote or the app and they can see, okay, I wanna watch USA, boom, I can add that. And they can click on that USA icon and immediately start watching that channel and they don't have to know the channel numbers of your service provider. So if we wanted to add a new channel, we can click our new button. We can type in all of our information and we can add our information.